So welcome to this next video. In the first video of putting a standalone in basically any car that maybe isn't directly injected, isn't uh, carbureted and stuff. So almost any car between the let's say 90s and early 2000s. And um, this is the second part of this video where I show you how to wire up that ECU. Because again, if you have haven't seen the first video i highly recommend that you watch it i explain a bit of the basic stuff that you need to know what you need in terms of sensors and stuff to get your car actually running and here i will show you a basic so this is very basic there are a few a few things missing but this a diagram will make the car or like a, this wiring harness will make the car run and drive and could be used for, for example, a race car that isn't driven on the street because there are some things missing that you maybe should implement, but it is the starting point and I wanted to make it as easy as possible to understand so that uh, basically everybody understands what I mean. Um, so there are a few things missing uh, which I will come to later. But first of all, a few explanations about this. Obviously on the top right corner here we can see that we have plus 12 volts. This is basically the battery. So plus 12 volts is the 12 volt battery terminal and minus battery is ground. So either a ground point on the chassis uh, or your ground point on the battery. So your negative terminal. Uh, usually you will have, if you for example have your battery mounted in the rear, the battery is grounded to the chassis and the chassis is grounded with one or more ground straps to the engine. So everything is grounded and that basically is the uh, grounding point that is visually demonstrated here. Then on the left side we have, you could say this would be an ECU connector on a very very basic ECU. This could be from a very basic uh, Speeduino ECU for example because there are some that look like this, for example the Spartan ECU and uh, they have these out and inputs as you can see here on the left side these are the inputs so things that go into the ecu such as uh, sensors and then we have the outputs on the bottom for example for ignition for injection for the fuel pump fan and so on ps is the um, is basically the power delivery so 12 volt in for the ecu uh, ground which grounds the ECU to the chassis and basically everything else and we have a 5 volt output for different sensors. As with the first video I want to start with two sensors that are the most important for getting the car to run. Um, those are the crank and the cam sensor. Obviously as I said the cam sensor is optional if you run a crank trigger wheel with a 36-2 or 62-2 or whatever with a missing tool setup so then you can run wasted spark and paired ignition so non-sequential if you only want to run for example a crank sensor if you want to run sequential ignition which has a few benefits such as better fuel economy in uh, low rpm and generally in lower rpm or path or better better running in general so this might be needed then or you might want that then there are also two different types of sensors in this case we are uh, showing the wiring of a hall effect, se hall effect sensor. You could also use VR sensors, which given the different ECUs might need a VR conditioner because a VR sensor is giving the ECU a different kind of signal than a hall effect sensor. A hall effect sensor sends a square wave where a VR sensor does not and that must be converted for the ECU to work. For example, a VR sensor would be wired into the ECU's plus and minus uh, directly because it only has two wires. In case of the Hall effect sensor though, the Hall effect sensor sends one signal each to the ECU. So this would be this pink line and this one. So both for the crank and cam sensor and they also have a plus 12 volt and ground 
uh, wire which obviously go to the grounding point and the 12 volt or a 12 volt source. Everything you see here in this red is 12 volts and everything that you see in black is the bla negative or grounding strap um, depending on what you are looking at. Uh, this for example here is a switch which is the ignition switch uh, if the ignition switch is off there's no power going to the ECU and if it's on obviously there will be going power to the ECU. When we are coming to the other things such as ignition and fuel you also may want to use relays to drive those things though with ignition spark it is not as necessary but for for example the fuel pump and the fan you will want to use relays that basically use a small current to activate a high current for the fuel pump because you can see the fuel pump output is only one amp and a fuel pump draws usually between 15 and 20 amps depending on how big that fuel pump is in dimensionally same goes for the fan going further we have as i said we have the crank sensor so if we have wired those you can already check if you for example see a crank signal or for example if you see a rpm signal if you have wired the ground and the 12 volt for the ecu so that is powered you can you should be able to see a crank signal or an rpm signal when you crank the engine the next things would be the ignition and injection outputs the ignition coils depending if you have a three wire or four wire coil for example the audi vw coils are four wire coils but they are just two ground wires and the other ones are for signal and 12 volt the 12 volt wires are wired straight to the battery or a 12 volt source with a 10 amp fuse so they get power from that and then they each have a signal wire that is wired into the ECU. And this is not wired one to one, two to two, three to three and four to four. It is wired a bit different because the, in this case, the Speeduino ECU fires in a different order. Um, depending on what ECU you have, you might be free to choose the order in the software. For example, you can do that with a uh, ECU master e uh, ECU, you can choose the firing order uh, freely in the software, so you might not need that order in the specifics, um, but you could do whatever you want, and maybe it may even be easier to run 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, and 4 to 4. So that again depends on your ECU. This would be for, for example, Mega Squared, or for example, uh, Speeduino, or most of the tuner studio using is use then looking at injection this is kind of similar although the there's only 12 volts running to the battery again with a 10 amp fuse but here we only have signal lines or the, we ground out the injectors to the ecu and here it is again different on a Speeduino ECU and then on, for example ECU master we have one to one but two is to three and three is to four and four is to two so it is wired a bit differently than for example you could do on a ECU master ECU where you could wire one to one two to two three to four uh, three and four to four I'm just showing it for this issue because I also have a tuning guide for Speeduino so you could use this as a video beforehand if you would be um, trying to get that running on a Speeduino issue. That would be enough to get the car started at least once I guess, um, but I would really recommend also adding in some sensors. The especially important sensor would be coolant temperature to gauge the for the issue to, get, to gauge how much fuel uh, to inject when the engine is colder or warmer. Uh, in that case the sensors are all just using a ground to the battery so this is coolant IIT um, which are the two temperature sensors and then they are using a wire to each specific sensor and then it is in the software you can select the different ohm values so the resistance those sensors basically have most of the time you can find uh, the resistance values in the spec sheet of the sensors and you can put them into tuner studio or whatever software you want there are also preset sensors that you can use those uh, should often be like bosch sensors or gm sensors or whatever but that's pretty simple 
TPS is a bit different. For TPS, TPS usually needs a 5 volt signal, so 5 volt source coming from the ECU that goes into the TPS and then again the TPS itself goes to ground for one wire and then again to TPS. This basically sends a voltage to the ECU and you can calibrate your TPS in that way. Pretty easy as well. The O2 sensor is again a bit different. Usually you have a controller for the O2 sensor if your ECU does not have one included. For example, on an ECU master ECU, you have a wideband controller integrated into the ECU and you just need to wire up your uh, LSU 4.2 or 4.9 sensor into the ECU. But on the Speedwino units and for example Mega Squirt, you have a external controller. So for example, a AEM wideband gauge and on that you have two output wires which one of is a ground it's said to be a minus 5 volt in the for example aem instructions which is just grounded out to ground and then you have a plus 5 volt wire wire that goes from the o2 sensor from your controller to the o2 input that is giving out again 0 to 5 volts to the ecu and the ecu can through the calibration of the sensor judge what afr ratio you are running at is basically it you can run your car like this so basically with only 17 wires if you would for example use a distributor you could even reduce that down to 12 wires that would be everything that you could need for running your car. Obviously most cars, not all of them, some of them have a fuel pump for example that is controlled with, um, not with, with the ECU, but for example with an AFM, for example an E4AGE, or they have a fan that is controlled via a fan switch and not the ECU, so that's why I left this open here. For example, for the fuel pump, you would just wire that with a relay, the same as with the fan, but that's something different. And I'm going to show you a diagram how that is wired right here. So that's also pretty easy. That's, again, as I said, basically it. While, yes, there might be stuff missing that isn't really necessary, such as drive-by-wire control, uh, etc. That is something completely different that we are not going to cover in this basic video. We are going to look at doing this in an actual car. On my MX-5, I have to rewire everything. So this is going to be, or I will show this on a car actually, but it will take a few months uh, until I will do that, but you still can get an idea how it's done here and it should be pretty easy. Even for a novice, this would be relatively simple to do. If you want a more in-depth explanation and a more in-depth uh, visual guide, um, I would recommend the video for, from Driving for Answers. Here is a more detailed wiring diagram that you can actually um, reduce to parts that you need and don't need and that actually has a lot of other things such as oil pressure switches and fans, fuel pump etc actually added in there so you can see how that is wired up there too. So that would be an alternative if you need for example a complete wiring diagram if you want to know more about this stuff. That's it from me on this topic. As always I wish you a nice day and goodbye.